Hey guys, in this video I'm going to build the new trellis chassis for the electric motorcycle. As some of you know, I built the original bike exactly two years ago and have been driving it and thinking about all the modifications that I'd like to do to it since. If you haven't seen it yet, check out the link in the video description to watch the build video. I built the frame and swing arm for the original bike using 11 gauge 1 inch by 3 inch steel tubing and it's plenty strong enough but at 30 pounds for just the main frame alone it's a bit on the heavy side for the size of the bike. I used a similar geometry and came up with a trellis design using 1 inch diameter and 3 quarter inch diameter by 0.083 inch thick wall dom steel tubing to make it strong but a lot lighter, which I show with a comparison between the two frames at the end of the video. When I say geometry, I'm referring to things like the 26 degree rake angle and 4 inch trail, 54 inch wheelbase, etc. It's very similar to most 300cc sport bikes and will subsequently handle like one. I'll share more of those details with the plans when I post them on the website. To start building the new chassis, I laid out the profile on my workbench by drawing the center lines and bends for all the main tubes and the locations of things like the head tube and fixtures for the battery and swing arm so that I could use it for reference when bending and cutting the tubes to size. Next, I set up the fixtures for assembling the chassis components on my homemade rotating chassis jig, which will hold them securely in their proper locations as they're being welded together. I put a link for that build video in the description as well. The first part that I made was the head tube. When I started the build, I didn't have a lathe to turn the head tube to receive the bearing races for the steering tube, but I ended up buying a mini bench lathe after finishing the chassis so that I could do something different with the front suspension. I'll explain more about that in the next video. But to get around not having a lathe, I just split two short pieces of the head tube material and tapped some sacrificial races into them, then assembled them with the head tube and bearings onto the steering tube of the old front forks to line everything up properly. Then I tack welded them together. It took some time, but using the taper bearings and races to line things up made it easy. Once it was tacked together, I removed the races and molded all the joints completely. Next I made the fixtures that the main tubes will be coped and welded to and will be used for attaching the battery and swing arm by cutting short pieces of tubing and capping one side of them with round steel plates that I cut with a hole saw. After these are made, I bolted them to the chassis jig and started on the main tubes.
I used my homemade tube notcher to notch one end of the bottom tubes before laying them out on the workbench and marking the bend locations. I used my TB3 rotary draw tube bender with a 3 inch radius die and follower to do all the bending. It's pretty simple to use, you just need to make sure to bend a couple of degrees beyond your target angle because the tubing will spring back a bit when you take pressure off of it. Exactly how much more you need to bend will depend on the size and wall thickness of the tubing and it'll take some trial and error to learn. But for the 1 inch by 0.083 inch thick tubing that I'm using, I'm bending exactly 2 degrees more than I need and it's working out perfectly. So if the tube needs to be bent 60 degrees, then I'll bend it to 62 in the bender and it'll spring back to 60 before it's removed. Once the tube is bent, I take it back over to the workbench to cut it to size and then bend and cut another tube exactly the same way to match it for the opposite side of the chassis. The tubes are then welded to the fixtures on the chassis jig before I started on the top tubes. The top tubes were a bit more difficult because the last bend is at a compound angle. In other words, it's bent in two different directions in order to return down and into the head tube. For some reason I've never thought to buy a digital angle finder for this sort of thing, but with a bit more time using a level and a square I could figure out the angle and set it up in the bender properly. After the top tubes were bent, I took them over to the chassis jig to mark and notch them into the head tube. I used the angle grinder to notch them this time so I wouldn't have to switch to a larger hole saw on the tube notcher and then switch back again for the bracing and swing arm tubes. I cut all the braces from 3 quarter inch by 0.065 inch thick wall DOM tubing and held them in place with some tape before tack welding them. The idea here is to triangulate the space between the top and bottom tubes because the triangle is the strongest shape. A low place at any point of the triangle is going to be diverted to the other two points and shared between them. It's a self-supporting structure. The idea behind a trellis frame is a lot like the trusses in the roof of your home. 
and that the space between the top and bottom cords, or the rafter and ceiling joists, is triangulated with bracing so that a load on the roof, like a snow load for example, can be distributed through the system and directed into the supporting structure below it. Adding these braces to the frame essentially turns it into one solid structure, like a solid piece of steel that can absorb and divert loads from one end to the other so the middle doesn't buckle under its own weight, without having all the extra weight of a solid piece of steel. I've probably added a few more braces than necessary, but they only weigh a couple hundred grams each, so it's not a big issue in that regard. To finish the mainframe, I added another crossmember that will support the rear suspension, as well as the mounting brackets for it and the subframe. Next, I made the dropouts for the swing arm out of 3 16 inch steel plate, which will hold the 70 pound hub motor that I used in the original bike. The dropouts were made to receive a couple of alignment fixtures that will make the wheel alignment easier, more accurate, and serve as torque arms to counter all the low end torque the motor produces and prevent the axle from spinning and tearing things up. I then made the tube that holds the bearings for the swing arm bar in the same way that I made the head tube and then installed it and the dropouts onto the chassis jig. I cut and bent the tubes for the swing arm and the subframe the same way that I did for the mainframe and tack welded everything in place. The great thing about the chassis jig is that it can rotate to any position that I need to make it easier for welding. To finish fastening all of the components, I started by welding the ends of the main tubes to the fixtures on one side of the chassis and moved over to do the same locations on the opposite side of the chassis. Then I moved back to the other side to work on a few braces and then switched to the other side again and so on back and forth until it was done. This moving from one side to the other periodically helps prevent things from getting too hot and keeps the expansion and contraction forces caused by the welding balanced from one side to the other. If I were to weld one side completely all in one go and then do the other, they probably wouldn't be very symmetrical by the time I was finished.
So that's it for building the chassis. I'll be adding a few more mounting brackets for the seat and the fairing when the time comes, but it's finished for the most part. I'm happy with how it turned out. The jig made it really easy to establish points and keep everything lined up perfectly. Some of my walls could look a little better, but overall it's a really strong design and I love how much lighter it is than the old chassis. 20 pounds is a significant difference. A trellis frame involves a lot more manual labor compared to more common die cast aluminum perimeter frames, which is why most production bikes don't have them. But it's worth the effort, which is why some of the best production bikes do have them. That's it for now, folks. In the next video, I'm going to tackle the suspension and a few accessories, and then it'll be time to install the powertrain and get the wheel spinning again. Take care.